Hey folks and welcome to the Pypnotic Symposium for the 16th of May 2020. Today it's Saturday, Saturday morning. Uh, we're leaving on a small trip shortly so I'll make this uh, nice and short. Um, but I just want to talk about how to use the, the histogram to make, rather to identify extreme histogram readings on smaller time frames. I know many of the users of the histogram like to trade on the shorter time frame. So let's just have a, a look at how we might go about doing this. Um, first of all, before you jump down to the tiny time frames I want you to remember that I mean the market moves in cycles okay and so it's important to know where you are relative to the big cycles because if you look at this okay let me grab my my drawer so if you look at this we have I mean the cycles going like this nothing really there you can see that we're we're staying below the zero line Okay, and so, yes, we are extreme here, but you, we don't know where we are relative to the big cycles. So this requires us to go to the bigger time frames and have a closer look. So let's go to the four hour and see where we are. Where are we? Well, you can see we're falling. We're actually, we've moved past this area of, of demand. So the buy zone, we had it here. Let's just mark this off. We had this, it's tested once tested and now it's gone and so would you still want to buy knowing that we've just consumed demand here well I think the clear answer is no and so it requires that you still pay attention to the to the greater the broader picture and so we have something up here now because this is the one that's responsible for consuming the opposing area that we saw on the smaller time frames okay so now you go to the small time frames and you would wait for a pullback okay um, and then you would be selling. So, I mean, I mean, buying down here is just generally like a pretty bad idea. Okay, it doesn't mean you can't do it. it just means that you have to, you have to, you have to do it very differently than you otherwise would. So, if we have a look at more data, let's go to the half an hour and the 50 minute just to look. You can see that we are down below the line. You can see this one here as well. Let me fat these lines up. Mean line. Let's put this on five so we can see. Notice that this is really. This is really negative. This is really negative. So that means that we have a negative bias. And so buying right now wouldn't be a bad, wouldn't be a good idea, despite the fact that the histogram is telling us, hey, we're reaching these pretty oversold areas. So if you look at where these were historically, let me click this thing on here. And so we have the. I mean, we were we were here. This is the last one. We came down here and we were oversold, but we didn't really have a big a big correction, did we? We had another one here. We had a slightly nicer correction just because we're down here okay every time we're having a correction but it's not that big of a correction and so it's going to require you to manage the trade much more aggressively in contrast to doing this on the smaller time frames you would actually be sitting on the sidelines okay so it's just very important I think to, to pay attention to this when you're looking to trade on these smaller time frames okay so where are we go to the daily or the four hour where are we Wow, we're just, we're plummeting. We're, we're leaving. This is so bearish. And so on the daily chart, I mean, there would be no reason to buy now, would there? There'd only be an interesting reason to sell. So we'd find that and we'd go like this. This is a really nice area to sell. We can just look at this distribution candle here. This is where we left from. You go to the 50 minute chart and you wait. Okay, well, it's kind of already happened. You can see here, we tested it. This trade's already gone. Okay. Price came, we left, we moved below these lows, we tested, and now we're gone. So there's no reason to buy. It's simply too risky. Okay, so before you do anything like that, make sure that you're paying attention to where you are relative to the to the bigger time frames. But let's say that you don't care about that, <laughs> okay, and you want to have a look anyway. Well, then it's a good idea to put very extreme readings here and have a look. So we'll, we'll click that on. And then we'll see what happens. Okay, so we've got that. Let me disable this. Let's have a look. We have the Euro Singaporean, Euro Singaporean, just here. And this is a positive number, so this should be looking to sell off. Okay, you can see we had like, I mean, the I mean, the push occurred already. So now we're actually moving pretty high. This is really high. The histogram is very, very positive. Looking at where we are, if we look down to here, you can see the last time we were here, we had a small correction. 
and we're here now we've had a correction but um but we have we still have demand below price okay and so it looks like that this is going to continue to move higher okay we're probably going to have a bit of correction maybe a correction but it's probably going to do something like that and continue moving higher and so we'll go down to the smaller time frame sorry the bigger time frame let's have a look at the four hour and see where we are okay here we have a four hour supply is this a beautiful area of supply um, it's, a, it's a pretty good area of supply we poke through it and we're maybe going to have another test of that area okay and so you might want to be a little bit careful or you might want to uh, reevaluate and here you can see that we had this is Euro Singaporean we had an area of supply it's gone the area that did it is oops is this one here this one here has been tested it's been removed by this one so this is the one here that is more interesting okay so I'd be more looking to sell at the 150 the 1550 uh, area than I would where price currently is okay this is a continuation pattern price went up we came down we moved sideways we removed this we left we have not been back since so the beginning of the, the sell zone is going to be kind of hairish for the time being okay so price will probably poke through here and have a bounce and then maybe continue up to this here so I'd be more keen on doing something up here so here we go down to the smaller time frame let's say the half an hour chart and we would wait for price to move into that and you can see here and here we can we can do a little bit more of analysis where we dissect the area you can see here we have a parent-child relationship so we actually have something like that so maybe something like that two times the area this is more interesting or you can look at all these seem to be linked together the area that did it is this one this is a candle that closed below so we have something like that sorry a lot going on in the background here um, and so if I zoom out a little bit more we just pop to here you can see it looks like that when you zoom out actually like that I mean doesn't it look like the slingshot originated from here so I'd say cool two times the size it's like this there's one time there's two times I'd be looking to do something here the 15500 area this is just a much more beautiful area price came down we bounced on this area the slingshot was pulled back and then we tore through it so this is a better area for us here at the 15500 area not where price currently is although we do have a small little kind of price module just here so you might want to um, have a look at that okay and by the time price gets up here I mean I mean the histogram is probably going to be moving pretty close to where it is now so that just be a really nice confluence we have price poking through here and price poking into here so we have two reasons to sell this at a sell zone which is much more attractive than selling it where it currently is or or doing something in, uh, else entirely okay so be super super careful let's have a look at the Swiss franc uh, Singaporean dollar Swiss franc Singaporean dollar where are we here it is so this is telling us to to sell and so you would ask yourself well do we want to sell here let's have a look well, we're poking into this area just here um, not a beautiful area because the sell zone is up here so I would be looking to wait for price to move deeper okay so if we go to the bigger time frame to see what's going on there maybe the four hour I just want context this is so important context and you can see on the daily chart we have a few things going we have the sell zone is here on the daily on the four hour we have a different sell zone because now the four hours the same and the four hour we can see it right here very very clear super clear okay price came back a little bit deeper tested the child and then we left but now we're starting to form demand below price okay so that would make me think hmm is this going to be able to uh, handle another test at the 148 wait sorry uh, I better remove one of those the 14785 area and then you think mm, maybe not um, and so 
we immediately start to look up here. Here we have a nice four hour area of supply. Slingshot was pulled back. And this is where we had these areas removed. We mark off these lows just at this little point here. Tested, tested, tested. It's gone. Okay, this is where, I mean, the area that the price had to go back to before it left is here. And so maybe we'll have a bounce there. But we'll certainly have a bounce here, I think. There's a higher likelihood of that happening at the 14900 area. So keep your eyes on this and maybe have a more aggressively managed trade uh, at this price point here. But make, trying to make decisions on on this now is just like a, it's just a more risky um, stance, even if we put this up to three. Like so, I mean, it's a, I mean, we're still poking through there and we could have a, a bit of a correction, but it's going to be a shorter term correction. OK, and we can see that we have to move a little bit further. We have to move up to here before it gets interesting. OK, 147, 11-ish area. OK, so just be really careful about about playing these areas on the bigger, sorry, on the smaller time frames, because you can get yourself into trouble. I've seen a bunch of guys uh, posting trading ideas on the smaller time frames, and that's totally fine. You guys should totally continue to do that, but just be careful. Just know where price is on the big time frames. This is really important. And also focus where price is responsible for doing something. So here we have a really nice example. This is already playing out. We have this. It's tested once, tested twice, and now this tore through it. What area did it? This one did. The software found it for us. Boom, the software found this for us. So then you could go to the 15 minute and you could find where that uh, where that test occurred. And yeah, there's no momentum shift at all. We stayed above the zero line, which is telling us that we have a really keen interest in driving price higher. But just be atten uh, be aware of where um, of where price is strongest. Okay, And you can see that by identifying the areas that are consuming opposing areas. Okay, Currency strength is a remarkable tool. But pay, also pay attention to the flows, which you can see on the supply and demand chart uh, using this uh, the Pipnotic supply and demand software. So always be mindful, even though you're trading on the one minute and the five minute or the 15 minute, whatever, always click up to the four hour of the daily just to know where the major flows are moving and also pay attention to this. If price is positive on the daily chart, if we have the histogram that's positive on the daily chart, maybe you don't want to be selling on the smaller time frames. OK, pay attention to the major cycles. I'm just going to close this because we're done with that because this is where the action is going to happen. Okay, so on here, if we go to the daily chart, I mean, we're positive, we're really positive. We just react on daily demand. Do you want to sell? Probably not. Or if you are selling, you want to sell much higher. Okay, good. Well, I'm gonna leave it at that, a nice short and sweet video. If you have any questions, please uh, add them to the YouTube video or post them in the Discord channel and have a lovely weekend and thanks for watching.